This is the safest car in the entire world. It's safe because it doesn't work. I'm never going to be out on the road driving this thing. If I can avoid getting tetanus, I'm good to go. This is the paradox of the auto industry. How do you balance performance and safety? How safe is safe enough? The roads are inherently dangerous, especially if you're trying to drive and film a video at the same time. Let's go find somewhere better to sit down. Driving safely is tricky. For example, how closely should you follow the car in front of you? We make these safety trade-offs every time we drive. The space we give is based on a personal risk tolerance and a duty of care to the other drivers around us that defines how close is reasonable. Duty of care is a legal term and it's been worked out in the courts. But what if the driver isn't a human, but a computer? It should follow the same duty of care and follow at a reasonable distance. With a bit of work, we can scientifically figure out what a reasonable distance is. There are naturalistic driving studies that give us data on crashes, near crashes, and other incidents. Basically, what does it look like before, during, and after an incident? If we know what it looks like, we can detect when incidents are happening or avoid the situations altogether. It's very minority report. I want to geek out on these studies with you, but it's out of scope for today. The main thing is put your phone away and don't let your passengers distract you while you're driving. Autonomous driving can completely eliminate the distraction issues and that alone to me is worth it but there are still safety margins we have to figure out and this is an engineering problem we can use this equation to determine how close a self-driving car should follow the car in front of them we only need to know how fast the lead car and our autonomous car are going that's pretty easy how fast we reasonably expect the cars to break and we can make very good guesses on braking based on the naturalistic driving studies and then how long it actually takes to do these calculations. Now our autonomous car knows exactly how close to follow the car in front of it. Obviously, this is not the hard part of autonomous driving. That's maybe another video. If you want me to make that, let me know. I'm trying this video essay format out. The hard part of autonomous driving is lose-lose situations like the classic trolley problem or how does a car recover when it's sliding out? We explore some of that during Keysight World Innovate. There's a drifting research DeLorean named Marty. I wonder why they named it Marty. And pitting a professional race car driver against an autonomous race car. It's wild. The professional racer is a smidge faster, but the autonomous car is super duper consistent. There's a link for that session below. It's really quite interesting. So if you like geeking out on tech, go sign up. And remember where we're going, we do need roads and we need better cars. That felt good. Yeah. Okay.